Chase is in the hospital. Apparently there was an incident today while installing the E-axle. I wasn't there for it, but we're gonna go out there, talk to Ray, possibly visit Chase in the hospital. Apparently his arm could be broken or crushed. I don't know, the E-axle landed on it or something while they were trying to install it, and uh, he might've been pinned. So let's go see. Okay, so turns out I'm in the hospital. We were mounting the electric axle, it fell off the stand, and it kind of squished that arm there. So right now I'm just waiting for x-rays. Doctor had a look at it, said that, yeah, it's definitely broken. We just need to get an x-ray and figure out how bad. So this is my little update. What happened was Chase was working on this mount here, getting it ready for the EOS to get in, and he was reaching in, doing his measurement, and he probably put some weight on, but it caused the drum to drop and this was touching the ground so we had to get a bunch of guys to come and pick it up physically off him you know his arm went from like this to like eh. <laughs> what did you guys oh i thought for sure he broke broke bones i mean like it would look, look pretty bad he yelled pretty pretty loud he's like hey get this off <laughs> you know get this off me right and I heard him yell and then, you know, Dean's there with me and we're getting there. We got the guys running around. You had to call for the guys too? Like, hey, we yeah, need more help? Yeah, working outside on the, uh, on the, on those light towers. And they had, we had, everyone is, is only under there for about a minute and a half. Oh, that's still a minute and a half getting crushed. <laughs> it's a minute and a half, no fun, man. Um, we heard back from them. The muscle, the nerves, everything but the bone was damaged. He's gonna be sore for like three weeks. Luckily, that's the extent of the damage. You know, it's a wake up call, right? You know, you gotta think, be safe. We knew that these things were rocky, but now it's chained up. We have blocks. These were sitting there. We've moved this around a little bit later on today. Um, there's gonna be no more taking unnecessary risk, right? I packed him out to the house. They're nearly puked on the way there. He had to you know, put his head between his legs. Shock, right? My husband came in and said, you've got to come and help. Um, Chase's arm has just been crushed. Um, my background, guys, is I've worked 40 years as an emergency nurse and have all my critical care certification. So when I hear that, I kind of went into my calm panic mode. Calm as a nurse, panic doesn't matter. First of all, you, you kind of splint his arm and he was very pale and diaphoretic, sweating a lot. And um, so he laid, laid him right down. Uh, first thing is I felt for the break and there was definitely a lot of soft tissue swelling and I thought I could feel something. It didn't feel quite normal. Um, but first thing is lie him down, get an ice pack on under, over. Um, yeah, and he just wanted to relax for a few minutes. So that's what we did. And I think his friend Nigel came and two said, like, I think you need to go to Emerge now, Chase. Like, this doesn't seem to be settling. And Chase has a really, really high pain threshold. So it's hard to tell when he does something major because he'll do, you know, oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. And it actually is something. Kind it was thing. an actual shock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, I'm imagining something with all that soft tissue swelling, something called compartment syndrome, um, where the muscle, it all swells and can cut off circulation. So I think about that just because it was swelling so much. Um, even as Chase said to me, like the doctor felt the same thing. He thought for sure there was a break. When Chase said, they want to start an IV in me, why? And I said, Chase, if they want to start an IV in you, it's because they're expecting a break as well. And I do not know how he didn't break that arm. It looked like it, the way he reacted it did, the way my husband said when it collapsed and all that pressure and how thin his arm went, even the dog was quite surprised. So, but uh, I worked with this physician a lot and uh, and he said to Chase, if your mom says you need to come back to Emerge, you need to go back. He's very, very lucky, really. Um, it's not what anybody expected, even like the physician, the nurses, everybody was expecting a major break. He lucked out, that was getting him to rest it a bit and he's not rested it. He came in, took some Tylenol and Got it eventually wrapped up. I wrapped it up, splinted it a bit, um, and he went right back out. Strains and strains and soft tissue injuries can take quite a while too, especially the way it looked like it was compressed so much. Like it was so thin, you guys. 
um, to now it's all fluffed up, but now it's swollen. I think he thinks it'd be fine. Him, it may be. The normal people, it would, you know, take a couple of weeks to start getting better. Okay, my arm is definitely uncomfortable and it's sore, but it's not as uncomfortable as these hospital gowns. Like, why is it open in the back? Like, that doesn't make any sense. That's way more uncomfortable to walk around. Unless I've got it on backwards, and maybe you're supposed to wear it like a, a robe where it closes at the front, so I'm not walking with my back open. Maybe I did this wrong. Actually, you think the little V, right? Okay, you think the little V that's right there would be at the front, like a shirt. Anyone who knows Chase knows he's gonna, the, oh. he's gonna give it a hundred percent, no matter if he's got one arm or two. Oh, he'll be out there with one arm. He gives it more than a hundred percent, so he's gonna do everything he can. He's, he knows his timeline. It stresses him out. But you know, he's got some, you know. It's got great family, friends, uh, workers, everybody pitching in with this truck. Today I was expecting to get a text from Chase saying how well the e-axle installation was going. Yeah. But instead, when I check my messages, I'm in the hospital. I think my arm's broken. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you, you missed it. You, we should have got it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not something you need on camera. Right? Yeah. No. But I know they're going to be pushed. They're working every weekend. I know his dad, too, been working every weekend that they can. So I don't know when they last had a break, but they're working hard to get it done, guys. Okay, I uh, just got out of the emergency room here, and yeah, they're going to send me off, and it's going to hurt for a few days. But can I just say how glad I am that Canada has universal health care? I mean, x-ray, emergency room, didn't cost me a penny. This hospital even has free parking. Well, Chase should be here any moment, so uh, let's see. I was expecting him to show up in a cast, but I'm sure he'll show up in some bandages at least. Yeah, yeah, and luckily his mom's a nurse, so he's going to get stiff treatment at home. There he is. Hey, hey. I'm back. How's it going? It's going not bad. What happened? Well, broken. So what, broken. It, broken. what is the verdict then? Nothing broken, uh, but a lot of muscle damage, some nerve damage. It doctors thought for sure she was done. Like mom felt it, she's like, "Oh, that's broken." Then Nigel got here and he felt it, and he's a first aid guy, and he's like, "Oh yeah, that's broken." Go to the uh, thing. The nurse meets me in the hospital. She's like, "Oh yeah, that's for sure broken." Go talk to the doctor. He feels it, and he's like, "Oh," he's like, "That's got to be broken." He's like. Turns out it was the, there was enough muscle damage that the muscle felt like it was broken. Oh, the wow. The actual bone was okay, so. Wow. Yeah. Uh, can you, like, feel your fingertips and everything with the nerves? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, got, I got the feeling. It's just, it's going to be black and blue. So don't use it for at least 48 hours. So, uh, holy cow. Well, I was expecting you to show up in a full cast here. So I'm pretty relieved to see you in a bandage. It's funny, well, not funny, but it's great that i call this a happy -er ending then although i'm sure while you're trying to roll over in your sleep and then you're in pain oh, you're not it's gonna... Probably gonna hurt. yeah i had a little had some painkillers had a nap so do you want all three do you want to walk us through what happened here oh yeah i was placing the this lower hanger on the other side and, uh kind of reaching under it and placing a hanger and when i reached under it I bumped it and it fell off its little jack stand and then it fell down onto the hand, raised my hand, was leaning under it and the whole thing kind of rested on my hand. What, did you like realize how, how bad the situation was right away when you happened? Like, what, did you think your arm was pancaked? Like, oh, how? the arm was like, <laughs> it was thin. It squished it right down. Like you could, remember, hey, we took it out and there was a big U indent in my arm. Gross looking. Like from the bar of that, the stand? Yeah, yeah, well, it landed on there. Yeah, you could physically make out the U shape in the arm. <laughs> right, Joan? What were, when you were in the hospital or on your way, thinking for sure you had a broken arm, what was your thoughts about uh, kind of the future of the tr truck project? Did well, you... I figured, you know, you guys know what they're doing. And at the end of the day, it's first time ever in my life I was glad the truck wasn't a manual. I'm like, well, I still still be able to drive it. It's automatic. Uh, well. I was picturing that scene from Richie, Ricky Bobby, Talladega Nights. He's like, get this cow ass off me. I'm going racing. I, I was picturing you just trying to build a truck with one arm and another in a cast. I'd... Yeah, yeah. that's that, that was a worrying part. I'm like, oh, shit. We only have two months. Two months. We've got July and August to build this truck. And I'm like, oh, crap.
That would have sucked. What did we learn? Uh, well, make sure that you put a little bit more into the support. Like, maybe don't just... Actually, to be fair, I'm glad it happened to me and not one of the other guys. It was just me kind of rushing through. I got all excited. We were putting all the axles on. It was an exciting moment. And I was just, I was going too fast. I really should have. Like, my problem was is I was trying to, like, it really, I did it. I was trying to shove it over, hold the thing, and use the tape measure at the same time. So I had the tape measure to the outside of the brake drum, and I was holding that underneath so that I could hold the axle and the caliper at the same time to take the measurement. And I should have just got a second pair of hands. Do you realize that the last time I was here, we talked about how the automotive manufacturing industry is the safest? And yeah, that's this is what I'm like. Oh yeah, automotive manufacturing is the safest. And and not only that, but uh, we also said that uh, Edison Motors has yet to have an injury. And I said, knock on wood. <laughs> you did say that. Automotive manufacturing has one of the lowest WCB premiums. Believe it or not, this is considered one of the safest things you can do as far as industrial work goes. Believe it or not, Edison actually has an incredible safety. He's never had an insurance plan. Never work safe plan. Knock on wood. Yeah, and then days later, like, yeah. I... Yeah, no, that's how it goes. That's it, how it goes. It, no, yeah, we've never had an injury in like three years. <laughs> and then you Sorry. almost lose your arm. Yeah, that, no, that's how it goes. I'm just glad it happened to me and not one of the other guys. For really, sure. At the end of the day, that's probably the best one. At least we kind of were able to use it. Like, felt pretty quick to get a fulcrum point under there and rock it back off. Yeah. That was some really quick thinking, actually. Whoever came up with the idea to get it to fulcrum back off instead of having to lift it by hand and bring a jack over to be able to just rock it back yeah, over. Yeah, I went underneath to you right here because I was right here. I went this way and everyone else went that way. I mean, all things considered, we got the hanger on here. Try not to reach under it. Yeah, I don't center the axle a little bit here, but we got the points marked out. This saddle, it comes up onto this axle here, weld it on, do the same on the other side. We just got to make sure that everything is precise. It's straight, it's parallel, and that's kind of a pain, but... Oh, on future trucks, we are 100% getting the, it auto catted in. Because you get the suspension all auto catted in, and the frame rail manufacturers will just punch out the holes exactly where you need them, where you know both sides are perfectly straight, both sides are level. Doing it this way and working without any kind of like template or old frame rails and getting it both perfectly straight and true is kind of a pain. Oh. Especially Impressive. by hand without like a crane or a hoist, really. We got a backhoe. <laughs> well, kind of, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I can't wait till we can get a shop with like an overhead crane. Because we just had like an overhead crane, none of this would have happened. We could have just had an overhead crane, pick the whole thing up. But when you're trying to use floor jacks on a dirt floor and a piece of thing, it's just. Looks like you've made some progress up front there, too. Oh, oh yeah. oh yeah, I guess we did do it. We put some mud flaps on. Oh, I got the tow pin on. You know, logging truck needs a tow pin. Reinforced in behind here with extra plating. Reinforced into the frame rail. Front mud flaps. A lot of people have asked what the front mud flaps are for. And really, it's if any truck, if you notice, has got a really high front bumper, like an off-road truck, a lot of them put the front mud flaps. Because what happens is you hit a puddle, the puddle spray sprays up, comes back, coats your headlight. That just stops that front spray from a puddle coming up and coating the headlight uh we got the these little inserts here flanged up that's for the hood the butterfly hood is just going to slide in and out open up the top and we've got a couple plans on this but we're going to put a front pin in there and it's just going to be held on by six bolts so if you ever need to do the whole hood and thing to make it easy to take off Compared to a lot of butterfly hoods, you just undo six bolts, overhead, lift that off, take the whole hood off, put it out of the way. It's actually going to be a super easy hood to remove. And if you just need to do minor work, you just take out your butterfly latch, open that, work on it on the side here. This morning, I'm off for my last day of trucking for an extended period of time. I've been a truck driver for somewhere around 18 or 19 years, but thanks to all you guys, we were able to bring me on full time at Edison Motors. I gave my two weeks notice two weeks ago and my boss let me have a few days off, although I stayed true to my word. He needed me to do a couple days before I was gone for good and I did. So I worked yesterday, 
And because of that, I miss Chase getting injured doing the e-axles. A year ago, I came over to Edison Motors as a director. I've been doing their merch and I've just been doing all the video editing that I can on my spare time. Because of you guys subscribing to us, liking and commenting on our stuff, we've been able to somewhat fund a full-time position for me. So the content that you are liking and that you are enjoying is actually helping us bring you more content. We're gonna be adding a paid subscription to our YouTube which is not going to affect the, the content already being produced. In fact, the paid prescription is going to bring more better content to those who aren't even subscribed. A lot of you reach out and you ask how you can support us and how you can support us is by subscribing to us, first of all. And also those of you that would like to enter the paid prescription, we're going to have a few, few different options, offers. There's going to be a discount code for our merch store. You're going to get first access to the footage that we produce. So I'll post a video to our paid subscribers and you can tell me where I screwed up in editing. Like I'm, I'm a truck driver. I'm not, I have no training in video editing. I have no, tra everything I do is self-taught. So if I can show you guys the video, you tell us how we could improve it. Then when we do release it to our non-paid subscribers, they're going to have a better end product and you're going to be able to have supported that. We shoot a lot of footage and make a lot of videos and not all those videos are suitable to go on Edison Motors uh, public page, public YouTube. So our subscription, paid subscription feed, will get to see that footage. We don't have much of a budget to attend truck shows and or to travel for content. Our paid subscribers funds will help us attend more truck shows and to go places to show you more things. For example, within the next month, I'm going to be flying to Toronto when Flowdraulic has the e-axles all hooked up on the machines and done testing. I'm going to fly there and show you guys, make a video of the testing and the procedures and everything that I can show you from that. I want to thank everyone for buying the merchandise from us. That also helps fund our, our media. We're going to be releasing more merchandise and we'll probably announce it to our paid subscribers first. A lot of things are just a minimum limited first run. Like we had some uh, lunch boxes. We only had eight of them. Those sold out off our YouTube within the first hour. I'm about to release, probably at the end of this video here, we're gonna have four water jugs. Four, what would you call it? I guess a, wa a water jug. So I'm gonna put up a link here. First four people to hit our store, you can have it then uh, that'll be a perk of our paid subscription too, just for access before it sells out. So thank you everybody. We appreciate you. Thank you for enjoying the journey and thank you for helping it. So we have a position within the company to bring you more of the journey. We don't pay for anything through the truck funds. It's a super tight budget around Edison Motors and uh, all of our media has been coming basically out of pocket so far. So thank you for the support. Right when this video drops, I'm gonna throw out the water bottles on the merch store. I'm gonna put a link for the merch store in the description. If you don't know where it is already. And congratulations, if you made it to the end of the video and you watch this, you get first dibs on the bottles. There's only four of them. I think they're going for 35 bucks each.